I'llBeHonest.com. I grew up in a very religious home, and my mother made me go to church. And I got even older, and she could put the pressure on. She knew how to, you know, put down the thumb screws to get her son in church. And all of a sudden, I got an interest in church, and I got an interest in religion. And I went so far as to walk an aisle one time, even though I'd made numerous professions of faith, on this occasion, I came forward to acknowledge that God had called me to preach. And I, that's an entirely different message. I don't know what your view of God's call is, but there was always intuitively a sense that God had set me apart to preach the gospel before I was ever converted. But God saved me, you know, and at least I thought He did. I'd made numerous professions, and here I am going down the aisle, and I acknowledge the call to preach. Well, you know, in those days, I would do anything to ensure my acceptance among those in the church. My mother, my pastor, the church leaders, I did everything. I mean, you know, I was in a church where there was a lot of emphasis on the external. External dress, external activity. So, you know, I had the right kind of haircut. I wore the right kind of clothing. And I'd go on visitation, you know. And, and, and I knew all the catch words and the language. And, and, and so, you know, I was a part of the groupie. But, but I was unconverted. In those days, now we're lo looking at, 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 at passion here. We're looking at motivation for living the life that I did. My whole purpose for living was fear of man. I wanted people to affirm me. I wanted to be a part. I do everything I could to, to merit the commendation of my pastor and church leaders. So I'd come to visitation and I would do all the things that in the eyes of men were exemplary for a fine Christian teenager. But friend, I'll be honest with you, when, when I got behind the scenes, I lived like a fiend. The things that I watched and took pleasure in via television. The things that I indulged my flesh in. The conversation that I would engage in. It was anything but holy. I was filthy to the core. But my, it's amazing, when I'd come back to church, I could suck it up, you know. and I mean, parade my spirituality with the best of them. But there was no reality. I always remember that word. There was no reality because there was no saving faith. And so I knew nothing of the love of Christ. It was fear of man. It was self-glory. It was pride. Now, here's something very important. You've got to understand this morning that there is 10,000 miles difference between knowing about the love of Christ and experiencing the love of Christ. I mean, listen, you can sing a song like I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how He could love me, a sinner condemned unclean, and all these songs about God's love, and you've never experienced the love of God. God has never come and infused the love of God in your heart. You have no concept of what Paul's talking about whatsoever. You have to pump yourself up. You get inspired every now and then. But there's never been any constraining force of the love of God being poured out in your heart by the Holy Ghost. And so, you know, this love of God, you can grasp academically and you can articulate theologically and yet not know one shred of the evidence and the effectual working of it in your heart. And you're still dead in trespasses and sin. You're having to constantly convince yourself that you're saved. So important. The love of Christ constrains us. Now I ask you this morning, take the test. Don't just say, well, this is, this is an okay message, you know. But you take the test. Do you know anything of the love of Christ in your heart? L listen, let me tell you what the difference is. When God saved me, unlike when I was unregenerate as a religious person, I couldn't sin and get away with it. It created such unrest in my spirit. There was a sensitivity there. God would work in my heart. And, and look, if I grieved Him with my conversation or in my thought life or I watched something that I should not, I tell you, friend, it just unnerved me. You want to know why? Because 
of the love of Christ. The fear of man, I, I could do those things and get away with them, and they really not bother me in the long run. But the love of Christ, there was a sense of accountability there. I just sensed I had grieved away that love. I had hurt the heart of my God. So ask yourself, has the love of God been ever poured out in your heart by the Holy Ghost? Or is it just a sham? It's just an academic. You know about theologically, but you've never experienced the life-changing reality of. I no longer see him just from what I've gleaned from a storybook or I've heard from the lips of others. Now I've encountered the living Christ myself. And he said, if you're in Christ, no wonder he could say, new creature. Old things passed. Behold, all things have become new. Now let's conclude with our statement. The great miracle of conversion is not the changes that other people see in you, but the changes that you witness in yourself. Can you look at your life honestly and say, only God could have produced that. Only God could have changed that perspective. Only God could have made me go back and make things right when I've hurt people and offended and wounded them. Only God, because I had no ability in and of myself in all of my depraved fiber to constrain me to do such a thing.